So we are back to Browns franchise and last subsequent submit to the draft and finally the 2019 NFL draft. So this draft will basically be a benchmark for how our franchise is going to go next year because this year we just did overall year just based on the fact that we did not make the playoffs for the second year in a row just based on circumstances and when I mean my circumstances that we just could not make ourselves in the playoffs 9-7 record and we lost in the very last game once again. To guess who the Cincinnati Bengals 10 and 6, they didn't even win the championship either. It looks like the Denver Broncos did. So now we should probably go check out what the news is and stuff. Just see what the draft stories are, just based on that. Most of them are pretty good half the time. So it looks like Luke Epstein looks pretty good in this draft, though. We'll go to draft stories. So Luke Epstein won numerous college awards, but will it translate to NFL success? So I guess he'll be pretty good. Hopefully he's not a bust or anything, but uh, Epstein looks pretty good in the draft. Who else? Rich Lake looks like he can go all day, apparently, according to Peter Schrager. So hopefully Peter's right on that one. Uh, who else in here? Uh, Marquise Ratliff needs to keep his head on a swivel. Okay. Tom McShay. Buck. If Buck sees the field on the NFL, he's going to tear it up. But who's Buck, though? Is it Joe Buck? I don't know. Uh, Rich Lake, though, it says, after a brutal workout, the Texas Pro uh, Day workout. Looks like he's ready for more. So, it looks like Rich Lake has the heart and soul to be a football player on this team. So, if we can get a guy like Rich Lake on this team, man, we, your team would just kill it next year. Because we need more guys of personality. Guys that can actually lead the team to championships. Because it looks like a roster right now has no clear-cut leader besides, I guess, Joe Thomas on offense. And Keeper Pop, obviously. So, uh, who else on here is actually pretty good? Yeah, Luke Epstein, 19 tackles in the All-Star game. Ooh, man, that'd be actually pretty good to get him. Um, Lee Kenson, fastest 40 at the Combine. 4.6, man. Uh, TJ Wiggins, setback. Okay, can't get TJ Wiggins. Even though I really don't even want a running back, because we're fine with Crowell and uh, Johnson right now. If we could find a decent running back down the stretch, that'd be pretty good. Uh, and DB, Valdo Buck. Okay, so Valdo Buck seems like he's a pretty beastly player, though. So if Valdo like, Ediv is that Edivaldo? Yeah, Edivaldo Buck. If he's down, like, maybe in the third round... Probably snag him. But the thing is with our draft, though, we'll check out what we need in this team just based on that. I think it says we'll check out our needs, though, according to the game. So the game, it looks like our first need is a left outside linebacker. So we need to draft a backup left outside linebacker. It says we need a corner second. Third is wide receiver for some reason, even though we have, like, some pretty decent wide receivers in this team that have potential. And then we have a backup right guard. And a middle linebacker for some reason. So even though you have the likes of Emery Youngblood and Ali Godfrey, two beastly players who are under the age of like 26, it still says we do need a backup middle linebacker for some reason. So I'm not going to listen to the game. I don't think we really need one. Just based on Ali Godfrey, 3,000 XP, and same with Emery Youngblood, 2,200 XP too. So those guys seem pretty good. So we just need backups at linebacker is what they're saying. So... I guess we'll just go with that. And then next up is our defensive lines. Our defensive line, I think it looks pretty good. You have Lacey Greenells on the edge. Emmanuel Ogba on the edge, too. You got Antivia Blue, who I might actually trade just based on look at his stuff, though. I mean, he's got slow development. You really don't want a slow development guy getting time just based on that. He wouldn't really be using it the same way everyone else is, even though his block shitting and power moves are pretty good for his age. And his strength is amazing, though. So I don't know what to do. I'll do with Antivia Blue if another team wants a defensive tackle, and we ha do need to move up to like a third round pick. I might actually maybe trade them, but let's look at what we need on the trade blocks uh, just for our pick wise. So, manual trade, see what we have for picks in this draft. I don't really don't know what we have for picks. Go to picks. So, we have first round pick 20th overall, second round 50 seconds. So, mill a pack, I guess. We have a fourth round pick, so not even a third or another second round, or we have a fourth round pick. So, and we have three fifths too, okay. A sixth and a seventh. So, our draft picks look kind of weak, though. I don't really want a 7th round pick just based on that half the time it's not good players, and most of the time they end up getting cut. So I don't really know, know if it's worth it to get a 7th round pick. It could be worth it if you get like a good guy like a running back. But usually we have enough running backs because we have Johnson, we do have Crowell, we do have, uh, I think it was Evans, I don't know what his name was. My, no, Mike Allen, that's what it was. Mike Allen, 96 overall, speedy, left Latavis Bacon, and we do have another guy too. So I think we're good there. We don't need a 7th round pick. Because usually you find running backs in the 7th or something like that. Or even on the 6th round uh, draft pick. But nobody wants 7th round picks though. So we probably have to go package together a deal for maybe a 2nd or a 3rd round pick. Because we definitely need another, another pick in those rounds. Because that's where you find like the best talent, the key talent on your team that can probably make or break your franchise. So who is the most 2nd round picks? We have 2 picks from the Eagles. Okay. The Falcons don't even have a 2nd round pick. Uh, San Francisco seems like a decent team to get a second from. You got the Giants, you got the Jaguars, the Jets, 
the Lions, the Packers. Who has more than two second round picks? Because they'd probably be most likely being be able to part with one if they have more than two. Uh, anyone else? Third, second, two fourths. Come on, show me the money. I want to see at least one team though. Okay, that has two there. The Bears, I believe. The Bengals. Uh, the Bills have two. If not, we'll steal one from the Bills. Uh, the Caps have two. Anyone else? Come on. There's going to be at least more than two. And two from the Eagles. Yeah, so the best we're going to have to do is probably just two. So we'll go to the Bills. And we'll take their 56. Maybe 56? That's like middle of the pack, though. It's not, It's worse than our own fi second round pick. So I think it's worse than our own. I don't know. But we'll go to the Caps. We'll see what the Caps have. So the Caps have a 39th overall. So that's like 8th overall in the second round. Or even 7th overall. I really don't know. Uh, So... What do they want in this team? They have a left tackle, QB, center, middle linebacker, and right outside linebacker. So we can't part the middle linebacker or the right outside linebacker, but it can be part with the quarterback, though. So would they be parting to be able to go with either Nick Foles, maybe? This probably won't. This definitely won't go through, yeah. Nick Foles is a trashy QB in this game, but at least right now. Uh, picks? We, actually, well, part of the fifth. A fifth, Nick Foles. Pretty good offer there, though. Pretty good offer. Nick Foles is worth it, definitely. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll give him a seventh. Fifth, seventh, and Nick Foles. Let's make a deal. Come on. And it doesn't even, it's not even halfway through. So, yeah, teams don't really want to part of the second round pick when it comes to Nick Foles. But anyone else, though, do we have a D tackle? Do they want a D tackle? Because we have a lot of D tackles here. We got Crease, we got McGowan, we got Antavia Blue, and we got Sue. We're good at Sue. We're not going to trade him, obviously. We have Antavia Blue on here, and plus we have Crease. Let's see Crease, though. Darren Crease. 85 tackling, 75 block shedding, 73 power moves, 79 speed, normal, normal development. McGowan. He's got pretty good stats. I like McGowan. I'll keep McGowan. And Antavia Blue. So Blue, he looks pretty good, but that slow development's really bringing me down on him, though. Like, he's like the perfect D-tackle kind of thing, but... I don't know, he's, yeah, they don't even want him. So we'll find a team that wants NTV Blue. We found one of the Cardinals. Got the Cardinals, we got the Cowboys. The Cowboys want him. Cardinals, Cowboys. Uh, what was that? Was that the Lions? Ca Cardinals, Cowboys, Lions. Patriots. And Redskins. We'll try the Redskins. I think they might have been bad this year. I don't know. Were they bad? Never mind. They were like one of the better teams, unless they stole that pick. Uh, they don't have a second round pick, though. That's the problem. Look at the Patriots. What do they have for seconds? They don't even have a second round pick. Okay. Uh, what about those Lions? What do they have? I think they might have been bad. Ooh, they have 50th. Okay, so it's kind of it's kind of breaking right there. Uh, what about the foul? Uh, wait, Cowboys. Cowboys good? I think they might have been good. They have 31st overall, plus they have it. You know, we'll try this first round pick. Might as well start up high. And it almost goes through, so they actually value him very much. So I think we picked up Intavia Blue with like a th second or third round pick when he drafted him. But we'll go and try. So I'll have to go try maybe throwing in some more players onto this thing. So you have a left end, free safety D tackle again, corner and a left inside linebacker. So we'll try throwing in maybe a fifth round pick this year, and I'm pretty sure that should go through. If it doesn't go through... I don't know what's wrong with the Cowboys, so I'll throw in that pick. Come on, let's make a deal. And it actually goes through, so we got a second round pick. No, first round pick. Basically a second, though. 31st overall is pretty close. But we do get a second round pick, or a first round pick, sorry, I keep saying that, for Antibia Blue. So, I guess Blue's value has jumped up, though. Like, he, like, when he drafted him, I thought it'd be, like, the biggest waste of a pick ever. But we got a first round pick out of him, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, now I believe it might be time to move on, move on to the NFL Draft. And see if you can pick a franchise-defining player, maybe a maybe tight end. Tight end would be great. So let's go and start off 2019 NFL Draft. Hopefully get a superstar. But the first overall pick belongs to the Cardinals. Second is the Buccaneers. Third is the Eagles. Fourth is the Dolphins. So let's skip ahead and see who the Cardinals pick first overall in this draft. So Porter goes first overall to the Cardinals. Second is Nickerson. We'll skip ahead maybe to, I don't know. Let's go to her pick, actually. Let's go to Adam now, who has more on the Caps' last pick. After he set a team record for pass completions in a game, his draft stock couldn't have been any higher. Showing tremendous pocket presence, vision, and throwing accuracy, 
multiple GMs felt as if he had all the makings of a franchise quarterback. Now he'll have a chance to take his gunslinger mentality to the next level with his new coaching staff, hoping it translates to NFL success. So I believe they're talking about Kowalski when they say that. So the Caps believe they, I, th- I guess they think they drafted a franchise defining quarterback in Austin Kowalski. So I guess now he should actually go and start, I guess, wait, we'll go make our selection. I think we actually have to go and start off our uh, list. So right now available is Luke Epstein. We do have Rich Lake still available. Scott Urbick. I'll make my uh, my watch list. So available right now, we do have Epstein. Might as well add him. We have Rich Lake. Want to add him for sure. We got Scott Urbick. This man actually think he'll be pretty good for us. Omaha or I don't know. I say that too much. Got Lowry. Where's that one dude? I believe they're talking about how great he was. He's at corner. Hopefully he's still available. We go to cornerback. Where's this dude? Got Lowry, Benoit. I think he was gone. I think he was taken, yeah. What was his name again? Uh, I believe I know it when I see it. It wasn't Lowry, though. I know that. So look for corners on here. See where one was taken. Because I know a corner is probably taken. Got Henson, who was taken. We got Venable. We got Poyer, got Nickerson. So I don't know if he was actually taken, to be honest. Uh, we'll look through it, though. I'll see. Okay, so the dude I was thinking about was Evaldo Buck. So let's go find Evaldo Buck and see if he's on here, though. He seems like a beast and a franchise-defining guy. And there he is. Okay, so we got Evaldo Buck. I don't know. Let's see this dude. Is he any good? He seems all right, but... Oh, the way they're talking about him, though, seems like he's a beast. Should I go with my gut feeling, or should I go... With the man, the myth, the legend, Scott Urbick. The Skurbic, I mean, Urbick seems like he's a great player, though. He's 6'5", great size for a tight end, obviously. Well, I bucked though to that. Oh, there's so many options. We got Epstein, the guy, the beast at the All-Star game. We got Rich Lake, the guy with the heart and soul on in Texas. We got Evaldo Buck, the beast at the Combine. And then you have a guy we need in Scott Urbick. So should we go over need over... I don't know. Uh, this is tough to say. Um... Okay, so at all these dudes, we have Luke Epstein. He's a left side linebacker, but look at his stuff. Those combine numbers aren't the greatest, and I believe he might be false to advertise, basically. What I mean is that I'm pretty sure he's a bust. So Epstein, he's false to advertise, and we'll take him off our watch list there. Next up is Rich Lake. So Rich Lake seems like a beast, but I can honestly see Rich Lake becoming... Uh, he'll be great overall at the start. Like He'll probably be an 81, 82 overall. But with slow development or even normal development. So, Rich Lake seems like a decent guy, but we don't really need to write, write in just based on we have Ogba and Green Ellis at the end. So we're fine there. Next up, though, is Evaldo Buck. So, Buck, he seems like a beast, though. I really want to get him. And the thing about Buck, though, is that he's 22, 22 years old. He seems like he's. He might be right. NFL Brady, basically, I'm, I'm saying. So, Buck seems like he'd do very well at the position, strong safety. And next up, though, is Scott Urbick. So, Urbick. He's first in tight end, most things like he was first in 20 yard shuttle, three cone, and or, uh, he was third in vertical jump. So he's a great tight end, but I'm hoping maybe Urbic drops to maybe 20, I mean 31st overall, we could snag him there. And then we could probably go and pick Buck this pick right now. Just based on we don't need Rich Lake, we don't need Luke Epstein. I think we could probably go and roll with our man, the myth, the legend, Evaldo Buck. The Vikings. And he's 76 overall, 22 years old, quick development. We draft a beast here, 89 overall. I'll check this out. Come out of the pro days purely for his want and desire to do everything the coaches and scouts asked him to do. He ran drill after drill, sometimes a second or third time using a different technique. He didn't necessarily kill any single drill, but what he did do was display the ability to take instruction well and a great ability to adjust to different scenarios. He's a defensive back. I can see playing any role in the secondary with some attitude. We'll just see how the team plans to use him come September. So he seems like a great team guy, good system guy. We could go put him at any position in the secondary and he'll play well. So Buck, great pick overall there. 76 overall, quick development. I like that. So now we could probably move on to the next pick, which is our 31st overall pick in the draft. We took with that trade with Antilio Blue. So let's give it a Hopefully, hopefully Urbic drops to us. I'm like crossing my fingers now. Hopefully he drops to us right now. Come on. So this Hedley Rich Lake does not drop to us, but it looks like Scott Urbic was not picked at all. So go and pick Urbic with the 31st overall pick. 
and finally have a decent tight end in the system, and a guy who could actually do run blocking, because one thing, like, we, sure, we have a great tight end in Green Beckham. He's got great offensive stats, great overall-looking player, 84 overall. The thing is with Green Beckham is that he can't block at all. Like, he's terrible at it. So, one thing you could probably do with Green Beckham is convert him back to wide receiver, put him in as a backup. If he plays well, we could probably beat out uh, maybe even Kenny Stills over the backup wide receiver position. So, you have him there, 80 overall at wide receiver. Then... You could probably go and uh, bring up Urbic if he play like when we draft him here, obviously, and put him as our starting tight end for the next year and see how well our team plays with an actual blocking tight end. So let's go pick with the 31st overall pick, Scott Urbic, in the system. The the so finally, Urbic, 74 overall, normal, normal development. He's got 69 run block, way better than Green Beckham, 60 route running. So this guy is kind of a raw prospect. A decent overall player, though, at 74 overall when he got drafted. So... It said we had a good pick, 21st overall. He's ranked 21st overall in real talent, so not too bad of a pick there. Now, next up is our second round pick. Where is that? Like 51st? 52nd. Okay, so hopefully a decent player drops to us. I doubt we'll have a decent player drops to us, but let's go and send him to our next pick. Through the sim, though, we do have a few players drafted that are notable. So we do have, I uh, got yeah, prior to the Ravens, got Tupa to the Chiefs. Anyone else in here? We do have uh, Cargill to the Eagles. And Urbeck there, where is he? Uh, Epstein, there you go. Luke Epstein goes to the LA Rams. Hopefully he plays well there. Hopefully he's not a bust like I thought he was. But, I mean, I didn't want to get him just based on we didn't need him. But, I don't know. Hopefully he provides a need for the Rams because they need help desperately, desperately over there. But, now next up is their second round pick. And look at this, though. Look at the talent available. There's absolutely nothing available. Like, undrafted talent in the fourth round is not good to see. So, we should even pick on this list. We have, like, nobody available on our watch list. Yeah, everyone's gone. So, um, maybe find... Let's go through some of these positions, positions see if we find any needy guys. QB, we're not... Don't need that. Wiggins seemed like he had a setback. We're not going to pick him, obviously, because we don't need running back. Fullback, don't need that. Uh, wide receiver. Any good wide receivers available? Doesn't look like it. The talent looks just, ter just terrible this year. But, uh, tight end... Do you have Cole McCain on here? We don't need a backup tight end. If I were to get any tight end, though, I'd probably get... I don't know. I don't know. This dude seems pretty good. But left tackle, maybe drafted backup left tackle would be pretty good. Probably not right now because it's a second round pick. But we'll find that later in the draft. Anyone else? Center. Right guard. Wait, right guard has a lot of talent. Oh, they're all fifth round, though. Not that good. Right tackle, don't need that. Anyone else? Left end. So you have Ely. Anyone else in here is notable? We get this dude. Nuka. Uh, I got Ace Brent. Ace Brent seems pretty good, actually. Wait, we'll go look at Ace Brent. Uh, I don't know. Is Ace Brent an ace? I don't know if he is. So, D tackle. We got. K Wait. We got Bins. KJ Bins. Hmm. I don't know. Don't really want to pick a D tackle at this position right now. Next up is Aaron Flanagan on here. So Aaron Flanagan seems like a diamond of a dozen. Base well, not a diamond of a dozen. More like a diamond in the rough, I mean. So Aaron Flanagan, look at his stuff, though. Should I pick him at this point in the draft? I have no idea. It seems like he's way too early to pick uh, Aaron Flanagan as a backup. But to be honest, I could honestly see him getting picked earlier in this draft. They're just based on that. Look at the talent available. We have nothing available. We have undrafted talent, undrafted and drafted, seventh round and third round. So... I don't know how accurate these undrafted talent things are. I really don't know. But my gut feeling is telling me to go with Aaron Flanagan in the third, or like at this point in the draft. Next up, middle linebacker, you have this dude. Wait, Robert Newton. Oh, we got to pick this dude. Robert Newton looks like a beast. So, wait, I want to do this right, though. We got Dingle. Okay. Anyone else? Deshaun Wilson. Don't need him. A lot of athletic guys. Ratliff. Wait, I saw... Wait, I saw Marquise Ratliff in one of those those things they're talking about him, like in the draft stories. So it's between Ratliff and it's between Newton. And to be honest, Newton looks like a lot better player than him. So Robert Newton, maybe pick him at this point in the draft. That'd be a good idea. So maybe pick Robert Newton this draft. Might as well do it. So let's go pick Robert Newton with our second round pick and hopefully he plays well as a Brown. And he's 75 quick development. Great overall pick by us. Damn, he's a pretty good linebacker. So uh, this is a good, it was a good pick though. Thirty first or thirty fifth in true talent, picking at fifty seconds. So he's a diamond in in the rough basically. So good pick in Robert Newton there. Two quick development guys so far in uh, I believe. Wait, it was that strong safety and Robert Newton. So next up we'll go and sim up to where's our next pick? 
Our pick's way down there. I don't, yeah, we don't have a third round pick either, so it's all the way down the fourth round. Oh, God. Okay, so fingers crossed there's actually talent in the fourth round. I doubt there will be, but oh well. So look at the back on some of the players I just drafted through that simulation period. I really don't know what these names are, but it looks like Benz is picked by the Jets. Anyone else? You have Lacey picked by the Giants. Uh, anyone else? McCain picked by the 49ers as a tight end. Aaron Flanagan is picked by the Caps, it looks like. Uh, who else went? We do have Ralph. Oh, Ralph was picked by the Giants. Damn it. That was supposed to be my fourth round pick, but it is way too late, though. Anyone else? We do have Downs. Ace Brennan is picked by the Giants. The Giants taking everybody, though. Holy crap. Um, anyone else? I think that's it. So, at this point in the draft, there's no talent left, but I mean, in the fourth round, 20 Bill overall pick, 420. Let's pick a great player, though. So, QB, anyone good there? Running back, nobody good. We have a lot of guys who even, we didn't even scout out these guys, though. So, Jason LeBlanc. He seems like a great name, though. Not a great talent, though. I don't know that for sure. Uh, tight end. There seems to be a decent amount of tight ends, though. We have Thurmond. Not really that good in combine. Uh, this dude seems pretty average, though. Wesley. Uh, I don't really want to pick him. Uh, anyone else? Left tackle. Oh, yeah, we do need left tackle for at this point. Maybe he might be pretty good. Got Stumpf. Don't want him. This dude. No, oh, he doesn't look good for offensive line talent. Left guard. Tate seems decent. Like, he's got most of those in the uh, single digits for combine. You know what? Actually, we'll pick Harden, though. Why not? He's a 66. Ooh, that is not good. We reached so hard on there. Oh, no. Okay, so he messed up with that pick. We can always really erase that. Oh, hopefully the players on our watch list aren't picked. Are now on the clock. Okay, so we'll take a look at this. Please, not all offensive linemen talent. Please. Oh, gacker has gone. Maynard's gone. Strode's gone. Oh, God. And LeBlanc is taken right after. Oh, my God. That's not good. So now upcoming is our most of our fifth round picks. And we do have Lester on here, though. But he's like seventh round talent, though. Uh... Mm, should we reach kind of at this point? We'll pick Lester. E70 overall. Okay, that's decent. That's okay. I'll take that. So we'll take that as right now. It's not the greatest offensive lineman, but we need one right now anyway. So, send me the next pick. And picked McCullough and Lester. Okay, so now we'll pick a wide receiver. Hopefully, there's a decent one available. Any decent wide receivers? No, they're all gone. Um, There's Rainer, though. Phil Rainer is okay. Blackshear. Who's Blackshear? Whoa, he's actually not that bad. Only problem is, yeah, he's terrible at speed. He's, he's, he runs a 4.5. That's not that bad. I mean, it's okay. Uh, should we go wide receiver at this point, though? I really have no idea. We'll go some more offensive line down. We'll just go and draft more stuff. I really don't care. He's a 70. That's decent. So... We're getting decent overall draft picks, great, I guess, depth guys. It, that's probably about what we were going for in the fifth round. Go to the next pick. The Browns are now on. We're way down there, though. Uh, okay, so. Got Tate, Duranus picked, okay. Moreland, Thurmond, Blackshear, Creighton. And okay, so we got that done. Or a little most of that done. Now we're in our sixth round pick. I think we might have traded our seventh round pick, though, so. And now, which we pick with possibly our last pick in the draft if we have a 7th still. I don't know if we have a 7th. Uh, we got that. We got Lemon. Ira Lemon. Who else is on here? We got Tomlinson. Should we just go with Darren Tomlinson? Oh, he seems brutal though. Look at those combine numbers. Don't look the greatest. Tomlinson. Who else? You got Copa. He's alright. We already have enough offensive, offensive linemen, though. I think we have enough. Got Hodge. We have that dude. Oh, there's not all that much talent left. So we're basically screwed at this point. You have no really that good of talent, at least for impacting guys. I got Gage Lucky. Can we get Lucky and get a decent guy and Gage Lucky? I don't know. We really don't need a guy playing the line at this point. Uh, wide receivers. Got Tomlinson. Tomlinson could seem like a good guy, though. We do need backup depth at linebacker a free safety water receiver uh, receiver 
Mmm. Yeah, two dudes with the same last name. Cruel. Oh, uh, yeah, these guys aren't good. Okay, so I'm guessing most of those guys will probably be undrafted talent anyway. Just based on where we're at in the draft. But should we pick a wide receiver or should we go with a left end and Lawrence Ivy? Or a tight end? Um, this dude, he's second in 40 yard dash. He's pretty fast. He's a speed rusher. 26 reps is not that bad. We'll go with Lawrence Ivy, actually. I don't really don't care. He's a 70, so we're getting decent talent here. Decent overall talent. I'm liking that. So we got that done. Now let's go to possibly our 7th or our last. I do have a 7th, okay. So you got Vickers going, got you know, Alice Carrington, Crowell, Tomlinson is picked by the Giants once again. So another player we want, picked by the Giants. So the Giants are really shipping up to be one of my rivals, I guess. I don't know. At least personal rivals. Same with our pick. Let's pick a random guy. I really don't care. Got Hardick. He's supposed to be picked in the third round, though. Should we just go with this dude to Hardick? James Hardick. Why not? Are now on the he's a 63, so he's a bust anyway. So, I really didn't care what it was picked with my 7th round pick. It didn't really matter too much. So, we'll go skip to the end of the draft and see... Uh, who, I guess how this draft shaped up to be. So this draft wasn't a great one by any standards. We did pick up a great tight end in Hard, I mean in uh, Urbic. We picked up a great a linebacker. We do have Ogba returning from injury, okay. So let's go with draft recap. So hopefully we had a decent draft compared to all the other teams in the NFL. So first round pick, we picked Buck. He, Buck. Buck looks like a great player though. 76 quick development. Decent zone coverage, decent man coverage at this overall. So... I guess great player at that at that age already. They have Urbix. Urbic, great player when it comes to blocking already. When it comes to uh, being oh, oh, compared to uh, Green Beckham already, he's an normal development. Then we do have Robert Newton. Newton seems like a beast, though. Great backup, maybe left outside linebacker should play well in the system. Then we have Ben Harden, kind of our first bust to guess if you look at it that way. 94 speed, great speed and agility. Other than that, he's not the greatest of player. But next up is Lester. Cool Lester. Great overall player playing the line, though. For 84 impact blocking, 72 pass block, 83 run block. Just your decent overall offensive lineman. Now you have Morstead. He's not that bad either. He's okay. Great offensive lineman, I guess. They have Lawrence Ivy. Pretty good guy playing the line, I'd say. So 87 speed is a beast, though. Great speed rusher there in the sixth round. Then we do have James Hardwick. The bust of the draft, basically. He's got a 77 acceleration, 79 strength. This overall decent players. So our draft it wasn't that bad. It was an okay draft. Now let's check out some of these other teams' draft and see how they well they went. So you have Demarcus Nickerson, superstar. So Nickerson, where is he picked? Second overall. Okay, that's why. So good pick the by the Buccaneers though. They have Bradshaw. He's a 78. Spain 65. Andrews. He's a 70. You have Wesley, 70 overall. So. Let's see quarterback though, Rashad Savage. Savage is a 70 overall superstar potential. So these guys just pop out of nowhere. A seventh round pick and he's a superstar potential. So great overall pick by the Buccaneers though. Diamond in the rough there. Next up is Kowalski. He's not the greatest either though. He's a decent player though at his overall. I mean, great overall throw power. Great overall speed. He's a pretty decent player though. Probably be over 80 overall starting off next year. Yeah, Finney. We do have Roosevelt. Mm, I don't know. Some of these guys are okay. Cardinals, they have Poyer. He's normal development, 80 overall, 91 strength, 79 run block, 85 pass block. Great offensive lineman, though. At left tackle, they have Pollard. He's kind of a bust, I guess. Nortman, mm, he's alright. Marsh, he's alright. So he had a better overall draft than it looks like the Cardinals did. The next up is the Chiefs. The Chiefs, what they have? The Henson, superstar potential. Tupa. Normal, Pearson, he's normal, uh, normal too. Uh, next up is the Colts. The Colts, you have Scuda, normal development, great overall wide receiver. They have Chris, he's decent. Whitehead, quick development, so great pick there. The Whitehead, though, running back. And we'll go into the next one. Cowboys, so they have Blackshear. He's a decent wide receiver, he's pretty good. They have Jordan, he's okay. Thurmond, he's a 70, so he's pretty good there too. Uh, Dolphins, what they have? So they have Harvey, great player though, 81 overall. They have Autry, 68. 
They have Ely, 68. I want to see this guy, Gallery. Sean Gallery is 70 overall. And then we have the Eagles. The Eagles, who they have here, they do have Cargill. I want to see this guy. 73. He's a pretty great wide receiver, though. 88 speed. He's a good, actually, really good stats, though. Holy crap. He's actually pretty good. And they have this dude. Looks like he's impacted. I don't know why he's impacted, but Falcons, they have Mundy. He's slow development. They have Alston. He is 68. Okay. Next up, 49ers. The Niners, how the, well did they draft? I don't know. Cole McCain, 68. Okay. So he looks like we got the best tight end available in Urbic. They have Benoit. They have two Benoits, actually. And they have Divins. So Divins is a great pick, though, by them. Ninth overall. They have the Giants. The Giants, they took half my players. I want to see Ratliff. 69. Okay, he's not the greatest. They have Brent. 68, okay, he's okay. They have Tomlinson. He's a 70, so he's not that bad. Anyone else on here, they have Thompson picked. He's quick development. He's a great pick there by the Giants. And let's see this dude here. He's okay. So next up is the Jaguars. The Jaguars, who they have here? They have Bass. Devontae Bass is alright. They have Daryl Johnson. He's alright too. They have the Jets. The Jets, who they have for the picks? They do have McKee. He's okay, 79 development. Honestly, though, one of those players, though, I really don't care what half these players pick, these teams picked. Um, anyone else? Wall, where is that one dude? Rich Lake, I'm looking for. Uh, where is he? They have DeMar Tuggle, I want to see DeMar Tuggle. It's DeMar Tuggle, he's a 70 quick development, so I won this dude, but didn't follow the us in the draft. Just kind of went bad there. Uh, the Rams... Let's see what Epstein turned out. He's a 68 superstar potential, so he didn't look that good. He looked like a bust, but he's got good potential, though, so I guess it's pretty good there. It's a great pick by the Rams at that point. They have Ravens. They have Whitehead. He's a good, good player there, obviously, too. Jamar Whitehead looks like a beast. 95 speed. Like, great catching already, 78, so he's going to be a beast in the league. Uh, next up, let's see this dude, though. So, George, he's a great player, too. Great wide receiver. But the thing is, we didn't need wide receivers. That's why we didn't really pick one. But Wiggins, he's an old development. He's not that great. Wait, I want to see this dude. LeBlanc. He's a 69, so he really didn't miss out on much. Great speed, great catching. Other than that, though, really didn't miss out on much too much with Jason LeBlanc. We need the Saints. They have Sinclair. Sinclair is great, too. Uh, they got Levin. I want to see Lemon. 69, so we really didn't miss out on too much there either. But where's Rich Lake, though? I want to see Rich Lake. There he is. So, Rich Lake. 78, he's a superstar. Oh, I thought he had slow development. That was a major L, though. So, Rich Lake. We could have got a superstar guy, but the thing is, we need a tight end. We do needed a quarterback. We just didn't need a guy at right end anymore. So, that's why I didn't pick him. It's not a great reason why we didn't pick him, but, I mean, it's my only reason, basically. So, Rich Lake missed out on a superstar there. Or else they draft. He's decent there. Riley, 71. Hunter, 67. So he had a better overall draft when it comes to depth, but most of these guys, they snagged like a superstar like Rich Lake, obviously. So that's why they had, a, I guess, a better overall draft than us. But let's see this dude. So this dude is great too. 79. Superstar potential once again. Uh, Hampton was all right. Scrin. He's okay too. Then the Texans. The Texans, they had Rayford. He's a 78. He's pretty good. Garner, 63. Then the Titans. The Titans, they have Venable, 76. Quick development. They have Lot, 68. And the Vikings. They're, looks like their center is a super tar, superstar development, too. 21 years old, 76 overall, 21st overall in the draft. So, we missed out on this guy. We didn't, really didn't need him anyway because we had Cody Warfield, so that's why we didn't pick him there. McKee didn't need, got him there. Let's see the Bears. Ah, uh, they have a good player there, I guess, a middle linebacker. I don't know why he's impacted by anything. Probably because he, he has to play for the Bears. But anything else? You have Teague. He's a 70. The Bengals. The Bengals have. They had Yankee. He's a 68. Okay. You have Forston. 66. They have Maynard. He's a 67. So, there wasn't really that much great of depth down the line, but it was already, I guess, 64th Fife or two. And next up is the Bills. The Bills, they have Lowry. So Julius Lowry seems like a good player, though. 87, 78 overall when it comes to that. Watters, he's okay. Parks, 
66. And the Broncos, they have Carmelo, 73. Worthy, 70. They have Cleveland, Carlos Cleveland, 68. Okay, and that is the draft. So this draft was kind of underwhelming, I guess. We got Buck, great overall pick there, 76, quick development. I like all the stats there. We had Urbic, he's a 74, great overall tight end in the system. Then we have Newton, great overall backup there, 75 overall, quick development. They have Harden, seems like a great player to put in the system. He'll probably develop soon eventually. But we have Lester, great overall, a backup offensive lineman. We have Morstead, great overall backup offensive lineman once again. We have Ivy, decent uh, player on the line too at sixth round. And you have Hardrick, who's kind of a bust to guess considering his overall. So it was not that bad of a draft, I guess it was decent overall, it wasn't as great as the first one, better than the second one. So at least we got better than the second one, which is okay. So now, you can take a look at the team, see how well it looks like when it comes to positions and all that kind of stuff. We'll go and switch some positions and see how well the depth looks like on this team. So we'll go to depth chart and see if we got to convert some of those offensive linemen from right guard to like left tackle or something like that. Because I'm pretty sure some of them could play that too. So they have Morstead, you have Lester. Anyone else could play that here? Do you have Shelton who's 75? We'll leave him there at right guard, unless he plays better left tackle. Does he play better left tackle? And he plays like 73. Anyone else? You have Gray 78, Botonio 83, obviously. Klein 75. Morstead 71, and Lester 69. So, I guess we're decent there. We have Brzezinski too, the right tackle, 75 there. Anyone else play better right tackle too? Because you never know if they just switch off. And Torn Gray 78, Shelton 75, and some of these guys like 71. So you could probably put one of these guys at right tackle or left tackle. Probably do that. A left end though, left end. We'll bring up Spatch, bring him right there. And anyone else in here? You got Nasib. You have Ivy in here, just gotta add Ivy there, I guess. Bring him right there. There you go. So you fill the left end depth right there. Now right end. Yeah, we got a right end thing filled right there. D tackle, we do have hard rick right there at 63. And we could probably add, like, I don't know. Maybe even Andre Dyer, though. We'll add him, maybe. Anyone else? Yeah, we'll probably add him there. There you go. So we're good there. Now, left to the linebacker, we do have Cordy Upshaw. We'll go and add, what's his face to that there? Does Noon play 79 at, at left to the linebacker? He's almost as good as Ali Godfrey in here. That's great. So you got him there, or not Ali Godfrey, Courtney Upshaw, I don't know what I'm talking about Ali Godfrey for. Anyone else back up there? You could probably add, like, even Bartuda there, too. There you go, so we're good there. So you got Bobby Newton there, or Robbie, wait, is it Robbie? Robert Newton, yeah, Robbie Newton. So, Newton will leave Emery and uh, Godfrey right there. Bartuda will move him up right there. We're good there. Uh, we'll go at right out to the linebacker. So you got Schobert, we got Grayson. Any other players we have on here? I think we're good. Yeah, we're good there. Now, cornerback. So, cornerback, should we go and switch over that one dude? Joe Ba, oh, he's 68, though. Ugh, I really don't want to put him there. He's just as good as Josh Wallace. That's really not that, that good at all, either. But Harden's a 68. I mean, 66. Anyone else? So, free safety. Does he play better there? He's a 76. So he's okay there. Strong safety, obviously a strong suit here. He's a 76. So he's good as a backup strong safety, actually, for this season. I think he'll be good there. And then we can probably go and replace Will Hill with him next year, just in case, so he can get some more developments. We're good there. Now next up is Kicker. So Kicker, obviously we'll put Coons ahead of Rail, I mean, uh, Rail ahead of Coons, just based on kick power and accuracy, because he's a better overall kicker punter. Leave Sam Martin there. Kick returner. So you have Roland Marmorosa. I really don't want him there at all, just based on that. I don't want him to get injured. But wait, we have Harden here. We do have anyone else. Where is that one dude? We got Mike Allen, we got Jaquiz. I swear there's another guy in here. Yeah, it's really not that good. We'll go to Punt Return. So Punt Return, we have Marla Marmorosa. Oh, some of these guys though. We'll put Odom at Punt Return though. I remember playing with him in the gameplay. He's very good at that. So leave him there. Because I really don't want Marimosa playing punt return because he might get injured. Uh, kick return will bring up probably Harden. Ben Harden will probably be good at there too. Or actually, no, Mike Allen. Put Mike Allen there. There you go. So we'll bring that down. 
Oh crap. Um, switch these dudes. There we go. So we're good there. We've got our wide receivers that are need to be protected right there. And we got our wide receivers right. We'll switch them right there. There. So we got our wide receivers protected there so they don't get injured. Any of these guys. Uh, I think we get a long snapper. We're good there. And practice squad, we can't do anything there. So we're good there for the draft, after the draft. Now we can probably move on to the next week and see who our undrafted players are. Hopefully there's some decent offensive linemen or even good wide receivers. Because usually just go and reap the wide receivers when it comes to undrafted wide receivers at least. So Because we went and found Malcolm Gilmore undrafted, 78 overall. He's a great overall wide receiver ever since we picked him up there. So you can probably find a backup wide receiver in the undrafted. Wait, what is this? So looks like Drew Brees and Clay Matthews inducted the Hall of Fame in 2019. So great picks there, obviously. But you have quarterbacks. So in this preseason, I'm not going to touch Kiefer Pop. Pop's not going to get any playing time just based on that. We're basically protecting him at this point because we do not want him to get injured. So we'll bring up Kessler and... We'll actually try out Vickers, actually. We'll do it like kind of like this. We'll bring up, obviously, uh, Nick Foles right there. There you go. So that's what our, our basically our depth chart will look like, look like a QB. Because I actually no wait we don't need we don't need him. We'll bring him pop as a third. There you go. So now next up is running back eighty two overall. We'll get there. Corner enough. Looks like fullback would we'll get there too. Wide receiver, green back. We we'll probably stick at. We'll do this. So we'll make green back him a wide receiver. Because he's a wide, he's a way better wide receiver than tight end. And at tight end we'll go. I guess maybe from now we'll go and leave him there a second so Urbic gets some playing time in the preseason because we always need playing time for your newest rookies so might as well leave him there so just for this only preseason we'll leave Green Beckham in a tight end and then when it comes to wide receivers in regular season we'll switch him over at wide out so we'll leave him there just based on we need Urbic with some playing time and with this I think it should be good there so we'll go into the free agency and see what our undrafted talent it looks like hopefully there's some pretty good talent here so we do have him on there, Rackpo. But when it comes to undrafted talent, though, who's even on here? Eligible. It's going to be more than this. So who's the best guys in here? We do have a kicker, Nate Sorensen. He's decent. He's not as good as Coons is, though. Just kind of sad. Uh, rookie here, we looks like we do have Holsey. He's got 84 speed. He's got a great stiff arm and great chucking. So he seems like a beast when it comes to that. So hopefully maybe sign him to the practice roster after this. But next up is Brad News. See this dude. So he's got 90 kick power, 82 accuracy. Okay. You have Greg. Greg, 96 speed, 93 acceleration, 70 carrying. He seems like a beast, though. 84 juke move, too. So the only problem is his stiff arm and his spin move. That's the only thing in his trucking, too, obviously. So DeAndre Greg looks like a beast, though. Then we do have Trent Beach. Anyone else? You have Launderdale. Uh, he's got great run blocking, though. I like that. I got Briscoe. Free safety. He's decent. Anyone else in here? Come on. There's going to be some more players here. Uh, Yeah, I figured it might be even about it, I guess. Wait. Yeah, there's some older, mean, uh, decent guys there. They have Zach Jose. 92 speed, 70 cent route running. Only weakness is catching at this point. But other than that, though, he looks like a beast, though. So his skills, does he have any good run block or anything? Yeah, he's pretty bad, as usual. So, Zach Jose seems like a great overall player there. We have Paulson. We have Pollock. 84 speed, 90, I mean 70 run block. He's decent there. We have Kale Paulson. He's okay there. Is anyone else on here, though? We have, like, Richie Gallon. 87 strength, 83 tackling, 81 block shedding. Play recognition is like a 50, so that's where his fault is at that point, but other than that, great player. You have Vincent at left tackle, 86 strength, 76 run block, 75 pass box, pretty good too, so you even Gabriel Vincent, put him at backup left tackle, you pretty good there. Anyone else? You have Virgil. He's alright. You have Chung at kicker, 95 kick power, 90 accuracy. So if this dude, if his awareness goes up though, He'd actually be one of the greatest kickers of all time, actually. Look at that at kick power and accuracy at this age, though. So Gordon Chung, maybe get rid of Travis Coons and add him. So we sign him now. Gordon Chung, we gotta obviously sign him. 
Because Nate Sorensen, look, he's good. Like, he's a decent player, but he's no Gordon Chung, though. We have Beach, though. Beach, not as good as Chung. This dude, not as good as Chung. Anyone else? Yeah, so, we got a great kicker over there in Gordon Chung. He's even better than the last dude he had on there. We thought would take over Travis Schoon's spot, so... Uh, let's check this out. So, we'll go to kicker. And we'll get rid of Coons right now, because you don't need him. Plus, he's making like 1 million, too. And then we have Gordon Chung in here. So, Gordon Chung... I guess he's making almost as much as Coons is, but... It's basically for salary reasons, we'll probably release him. And then we have Rayola in here. So between Gordon Chung and Rayola, it looks like Chung's already better than Rayola at this age. But the thing is, Rayola has where Chung is basically just uh, speed at this point. Whereas Chung has kick accuracy, kick power, and his speed's not that bad though, even for that too. So Gordon Chung seems like a beast there. Anyone else? I th Actually, no, we'll leave at this point. We'll go. Uh, should we just release Travis Coons? You probably actually should do that. Yeah, I think it might be the better idea. So, Travis Coon seems like he's a great kicker, though. I liked him. But, I mean, we don't need him anymore. Goodbye, Travis Coons. We don't need him anymore. So, our new kicker is 71, Gordon Chung, and 70, Rayola. I think we'll be good at those two guys. And see what plays better in the free in the, uh, the preseason. Hopefully, one of them plays good so we can go and determine the backup uh, kicker, even get rid of one guy, or bring him to the practice roster. So, that's a roster right after the draft. It was a decent overall draft, though. We got the great players, like the great backups, obviously, on the offensive line. It makes it a lot better there. Now, on defense, we went and added a backup, I believe, left it to linebacker in Newton, who's almost better than Upshot at this point. So we're good there. And on the line, we did add one guy in Hard Rick. He's okay there. But I think we'll be good with their team, though, at this point in the free, I mean, in the, the preseason. So, anyway, I guess, unless it's off here, make sure to like, subscribe for more Brian's Fetches. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.